there's no rain, only sunshine now Maria. that has arrived. <laughs> That's so lacking in sincerity. <laughs> that is the problem with what you have just said. Hey, congratulations, we survived two years of January. Yay! Yay! We did it, everyone, we did it. It was quite long, wasn't it? Oh, every year it just goes on and on. But I sort of felt it was like spring this week. We had one nice day and I thought, OK, spring. It was very... Well, one day I cycled to the gym without uh, tracksuit bottoms on. What? <laughs> Naked? No, no, I had little shorts on. You went in shorts? Little shorts, yeah. How far is it to the gym? Ooh, about, ooh, uh, ten feet. <laughs> you didn't really need to cycle. Uh, no, it, it, I mean it's you know it's far enough to get cold, but it, I wasn't cold. Cause it was, but then the next day, of course, it was freezing, and I didn't have gloves on, and I, you know, yeah. I thought, thought I was going to die. I have to admire you for cycling to the gym and then cycling to the studio to record your television show because you're not as young as you were. No, my I feel like my bike's losing its speed, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> I hear ya. My bike seems it's getting heavier. That bike, I don't know what's going on. With well, it. of course, I have obviously jumped over to the dark side. And got myself an e-bike now. Ooh. I know. I'm really letting the side down. But I still have one that needs pedal power. So I do now, on my cycles, I do look at people on electric bikes and I kind of think, would it be so bad? Would it be so evil to get one? But no, I'm holding firm. Well, the thing is, you can try it out in London because now, instead of the Boris bikes or whatever they were called, uh, everyone's doing the lime bikes. And there's a green one as That's well. That's what I'm saying, the lime, lime. Do you see? No, no, but there's other ones that are dark green. Oh. Uh, first ten minutes free, I read with interest. <laughs> <laughs> but take ten minutes and put it back. That's and what take I think. another one. Yeah. They're idiots, these people. <laughs> no, we're idiots. Yeah, right. call themselves businessmen. Um, I loved your show last night. I thought it was a really lovely um, couch. Do you know, I rarely uh, love my show as much as I did last night. I just enjoyed all of those guests so much. And they gave a lot. They all gave, maybe Dakota Fanning, not so much. But, um, but they... she, no, but she hates talk shows. Oh, so does she, she? So she did very well, Dakota Johnson. By by speaking at all, in and, fact. And, just, and laughing and smiling and just, you know, I think she enjoyed herself. Yeah. Yeah. No, a really lovely couch. And also, you talked to the name of the man I've forgotten, American Fiction. Oh, Sterling K. Brown, who was in here with Chris on Thursday morning. Oh, was he? Uh, so he had a long old day. He had a nap. He had a nap on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Because he did Chris in the morning and then he came in to see us. But he is a force of nature. I Isn't really he like great? him. great. And he's so good in American Fiction. And I love the film American Fiction, actually. If you get the chance to see it, lovely yeah. Virgin Radio peeps, it's a it, good... Yes, I'm with you because it's a, it's a hard sell because we say everything's good and then we tell you what that film's about. It's about kind of, you know, uh, a literary professor and whose you, books can't get published yeah, and you just think oh that sounds awful um, it isn't it's very funny and it's just great characters because he does a spoof on the black tropes basically of what people expect you know a black man to be so he does this spoof and it's called The Rude Word and um, they love it of course you know and, yeah. but I love the family the whole family exactly even, want without, to even watch without the them. satire yeah. you'd love that family you'd want to spend time with them yeah, yeah. I want them to do a series of that, please. If they could, please. What Thank else you. are your recommendations this week, please? Uh, da, 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 or what uh, else have you done? Uh, You've been very busy of late. I have. I've been sitting in my room doing a bit of boo. Oh, well done. Um, and also, then in the evening, what have you started watching? We're watching uh, the Jodie Foster in True Detective. Yes, she's great, isn't she? Uh, she's very good. And we've just started watching. We've only been one episode in. And it's, an, it's one of those things where we're a bit scared because the first episode was so good, you kind of think, You've, have you tricked us here by making this very good? Or is the whole series... <laughs> I love series... how suspicious you are. Well, because we've been bitten before. You know, yeah, when, you, when yeah. you start a new series and the first episode is amazing. And, and you're then, hooked. And then four episodes in, you're like, oh, God, why do we but start watching this? you haven't this? said what it is. Oh, uh, Fargo with right. uh, Juno Temple. Who in is lead. great, who is in Ted Lasso, who is yeah, a very yeah. good actress. Yeah, yeah, really good. And uh, yeah, so hopefully that... That holds up. Uh, what have you seen? Really nothing. I mean, terrestrial television, I hate to say this, I was just having a chat with Owen outside, is so grim these days. I mean, it's gladiators or traitors, it seems but to me. people love gladiators I know, and traitors. but I'm not people. I don't love it. <laughs> I, was... I did love traitors. I did love traitors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, uh, and yeah. he, has he got a career outside of traitors? What's he going to do? He's given up his job and he wants to go into showbiz. What, he's given up his job? Yeah, the man who won the traitors. Oh, what was his job? I don't know. 
Well, he's got 95 grand, so he can... That's not going to last forever. Well, he doesn't know that. He's young. Uh... <laughs> 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 and, and also, you know, people kind of go, oh, he's so clever. He played a really clever game. He was in a castle with morons. <laughs> it was... Uh, yeah. The bar was quite low. Yeah. <laughs> But I did quite like what he said to his girlfriend. First thing he said to his girlfriend was, do you still love me? Because obviously he realised that he had been a bit of a nasty word. Oh. Do you still love me? That makes me like him more. I didn't watch it. I, didn't, I, have, no, I have no reason not to like him. The end. All what right. are you going to play? I'm going to play uh, Blondie and Atomic. And you can fast forward during the traitors during this. So you'll be totally up to speed. And oh, also you need to get some letters. That's what you need to yeah. get. Two of them. Two. For today, we're doing two. <laughs> I'm still looking at you puzzled at fast forwarding. But anyway, play the record. Virgin Radio. Adrian. Maria. Yes, that is me, and I have some problems. <clears throat> Dear Graham and Maria, I have been signed off for work with stress for two weeks after suffering a panic attack, with one re week remaining on my leave. I'm trying to decide whether to go back or just pull the plug and quit altogether. On the one hand, my boss is a bully who constantly finds fault in our work, changes our work priorities on a whim and doesn't listen to any new ideas. Five people have left the company in the last six months one who was fired for spurious reasons. They haven't been replaced and the rest of us are expected to pick up the pieces. It's a small company owned by the boss and there is no HR department. On the other hand, I work in a niche area and have been looking for a new job for several months now. Yesterday I had an interview that went really well, but the process won't be complete for a few weeks and it's not guaranteed that I will get it. I've had some good leads since I took time off too. I have savings that will see me through a few months, but is that really what I want to do with my hard-earned money? So, over to you and the listeners. Do I pull the plug and walk away, potentially risking financial pain if the job hunt continues to drag on, or do I return to work and find some way to put up with the random phone calls with ever-increasing demands and the damage it's doing to my mental health? And that is from Abigail in Warrington. Oh, Abigail, that sounds horrible. Um, my advice to you, and Graham might be different, would be to, first off, talk to your boss. It's owned by your boss. There is no uh, HR company. Um, it, you know, losing so many people, five people or four have left, by, is too many. There's, there's something going wrong here. But maybe they're trying to downsize. Maybe they're trying to get rid of people. You know, nobody really knows. But you need to talk to us. I would say do everything that you can before you throw in the towel because then you can say, I tried and no one listened to me because I think you're at the moment you're in a bit of a hysterical situation with it. But talk to the boss. And then I would say my feeling is use, um, you know, if you leave, you've got incentive. You've got incentive to get another job. At the moment, you're dabbling. You're dipping your foot in the water and it's not really turning up much. But if you have incentive and you don't want to use all your savings, I mean, good luck with the one that you went to, the interview you went to. But I would say, I think it's making you unhappy and unwell. I would say leave. They don't deserve you. Yeah, I'm with you. And also, look, this bully boss is delighted with himself because he's now not paying five people yeah. he was paying and the work, you're all still doing it. So, Abigail, uh, yeah, you, you've got to kind of put some value on yourself and just go, you Quite know what? right too. Yeah, I need to get out of here. I'm worth more than this. The thing I would say is, yes, you've got these savings and that's good, but you don't have to to spend them because yes you work in a niche thing but you know what while you're looking for this other job you could pick up a bit of bar work in the evening mm -hmm. or go to a, a you know one of those uh, agencies and get some you know cleaning work or something there must be other things you can do and you'll make a bit of money a bit of pocket money from that and it means you're not spending money while you're doing that mm. and, and also it means you're not sitting at home going oh dear god I have no job what the hell? I don't think Abigail wants to do cleaning. She's in a niche market. I want to know what she. What is the niche market? It's cleaning. She. <laughs> that isn't niche. That is very far from niche, apparently. Uh, but I, I just think Abigail, you, you've got, you hold more cards than you think you do. I would say because you, you have these savings, which is great. You have skills that are niche, which has to be good. <laughs> Should we keep saying niche? Let's say niche a lot. <laughs> yeah, niche Lorraine. <laughs> oh, yummy. <laughs> Ooh, lovely. Niche Abigail. <laughs> um, yes, you've got Martha's to... Martha's going to make it later. <laughs> oh, I wish she would. Um, I, I think 
think you've got to sort of make yourself feel like you are valued and worthwhile. And at the moment, you are feeling very worthless. To have a panic attack is not great and to be feeling so miserable about it. But you are playing into their hands by leaving because they're obviously trying to get rid of everyone so they don't have to pay people. But I would talk to the boss and knowing that you can leave and that you probably are going to leave, you can be frank. And you can say this is not a good environment to work in and he is making everyone's life a misery. If you don't care, fine, but I'm leaving. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, 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 that's one of the things. There's nothing to be gained from it. Well, what is to be gained is thinking I did stand up for myself at least. But you know, she walked course- away. She wins. She wins. It's all going on over there. And good luck to everyone who's staying in there. But I'm I'm out. I would just spring yourself, Abigail. That's what I would do. But, you know, what's that thing, the spree d'escalier, if you'd have thought of it at the time? I think it's always good to think, I did stand up for myself. I did speak my mind. I did, in a calm and collected way, tell them why I was going to leave. And rather than just go, oh, I'm leaving because I've got a panic attack. No, no, but then the big bully boss is just going to scream at you and, oh, you know, and he'll you know, throw your house plant out and that sort of stuff. You know, <laughs> I love your idea of an office. Well, you know, everyone has a plant, don't they? Clear out your clear your desk. Well it's a bit like television, is it? Clear your desk, you take a picture of your wedding and your pot plant. Yes. And your sandwich maker. You leave your niche entirely empty when you leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> clear your niche. <laughs> <laughs> Clean you should get out of here. Uh, Abigail, fly or free, because you have skills, you can use them. Any advice for Abigail? Remember, there's no HR department. Uh, plus four, I just say that because often... People will yeah, say yeah. HR, yeah. yeah. Plus four, four, triple three, double zero, triple three, double zero. If you've got advice for Abigail, we'll have another letter after Mr. James Blunt. Virgin Radio. Nick Maria. Uh, hot off the text. Oh, yes. Or the WhatsApps. Oh, yes. I like to know that people are listening. Uh, they're all loving Fargo. Yeah, saying stick with it. Stick with it. It's very oh, good. Oh, well, that's pleasing to know. Yeah, that's good. Are you relieved? Has, has that brought you some relief? Well, we still haven't finished it, have we? <laughs> they're saying stick with it. Yeah, well, okay. Let, let's chat when we see the last episode. Okay. That's what I'm saying. In the meantime, here's the second problem. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Graham and Maria, I have just turned 40 and have been with my husband for 12 years. We have a two-year-old daughter and started parenthood late due to health issues in my 30s. Since having my daughter, I have felt a strong need to give her a sibling and that I won't be doing right by her if I don't. We started the fertility treatment after not falling pregnant and I was told that I have few eggs left and will start menopause soon. However... My relationship now has conflict and my husband doesn't want to be involved in fertility treatment or try for a second child at this time. I think the conflict conflict is situational from a really hard year with ageing parents, a toddler that doesn't sleep, etc. We are in counselling, but I don't see a quick fix. Do I accept that I won't have a second child? or pursue IVF solo, this would be egg retrieval with a lower chance of success. This is potentially my last chance and I will feel so much grief if I accept that I will never have another child. And that is from Rosie in Glasgow. Oh, Rosie in Glasgow, this is a really tricky one because, you know, for women it's just so hard because there's the ticking clock, etc. I would say to you, Rosie, I mean, you know, things come along in leaps and bounds with fertility treatment. I would say, put it to your husband that you pursue egg retrieval, which would mean freezing your eggs. And then, you know, if you start menopause soon, people are having babies later because menopause can be reversed, etc. I don't want to get into too much of the medical stuff. But I would say, then you know that you've, you've tried, you've done something. It's going to be more, perhaps, heartache further down the line, though. And I think, you know, you are in counselling, which is a great thing, and there isn't a quick fix, but it's your husband who is resistant to this. And I understand with ageing parents and a toddler that doesn't sleep, he's thinking, why would I put more stress in my life? But you're thinking, this is my last go at this. So maybe egg retrieval and put them on, literally on ice, until such time that things are better, and, and may, you know, I don't know. It's it's such a difficult one, because you will get to that stage where you think, why didn't I do that last thing? Why didn't I have one last go? 
but then you know but then uh, the cha- it sounds like the chances of success here are so slim because you know she had difficulty already now there are very few legs eggs left and i just <sighs> for me i just think rosie you are making a bad situation worse because this little family is already struggling with everything that's going on and you know i think rosie focus on what what's really go what what, what is going have. yeah what is happening you have a husband you have this little child and you've got aging parents look after that rather than you know i feel like it's just weird it, i mean i get totally what you're saying Maria, mm, mm. that you know it's this you know, primal urge. And... I think that's what we're, you're not understanding is that yearning, and it could be that you're transferring a lot of what's going on in your little family that yearning onto a second child. I mean, you know, a second child will be difficult, and the chance, the odds are slim. You're possibly going to be perimenopausal in a couple of years, and the few eggs that you have will have to be put on ice, and that is a lower success rate, etc. I think you know all of these odds, but there is that yearning, and so if you really feel that then go it alone for egg retrieval because nobody knows what's going to happen in the future and people but can then, but then i feel like that is rosie saying i am going it alone that's because that's that's well, the I, end of her no marriage. but i no, i think you in counseling you say how do you feel about the fact that i go it alone and we we wait we wait a couple of years because you can have reversal menopause symptoms to, you know, if you've got a viable embryo, you can do that. Uh, but, the, you know, the odds are getting smaller and smaller. But I feel that it's going to make her crazy if she doesn't do this. If you don't attempt something, even if it doesn't come to fruition, you have at yeah. least finally got the last few remaining eggs. I mean, I think there's something terrible about when you're told that you have a last few remaining eggs. It just feels so final. But also, I think, though, there will be a lot of people listening to this thinking, you know, I wasn't able to have any kids. You know... Of course there is that argument, too. That grief... Is you know she's talking about oh I'll, I'll, I will feel so much grief that I accept I never mm, have another child. Mm-hmm. You've had a child, Rosie. You've had this miracle walk into your life. So I kind of I I just feel like just love the life you are living rather than mourning the I life you don't. I have spoken to people though that have had one child and then are sort of denied because there's a, such a thing as second child infertility. Yeah, yeah. Um, and feel absolutely bereft. And it's, it's almost like you know once you've known what's possible with not having a child. I'm just kind of, you know, free-balling here. With, once you, if you don't have a child, then you don't know. But if there's one child that you've got and you want to recreate, then that's, that's it's the same sort of grief. I mean, look, there's no right or wrong thing yeah. here. You feel what you feel and you have to go with it. But I think do it with the help of a counsellor and hopefully with the blessing of your husband because things sound precarious, don't they, Graham? Yeah, no, they do. And also, I want you know, I, I wonder, you know, it, could you do um, adoption later on? But I guess they're getting a bit long in the tooth for that as well. Mm. So it's all, it's it, it, yes, time is again, you, Rosie. But just, I would say, count your blessings. You are a very lucky woman. You've had this miraculous child. Um, and I guess stick with counselling and, and see what comes about. And But Maria's right. You feel what you feel. You can't kind of control this urge. Mm. Uh, I'm sure lots of people will have advice for Rosie in Glasgow. Uh, the WhatsApp is plus four four triple three double zero triple three double zero. Maria McCurlin. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes. How do you feel about that? That's great news. Oh, again, in sincerity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sun has come out. Uh, Okay, our first letter was from Abigail in Warrington. Uh, Abigail, oh dear. She's been signed off work with stress for two weeks. She had a panic attack. Uh, She's got another week of leave left. And her problem is this. Does she go back and suffer through this uh, with a horrible bullying boss who's managed to get rid of five people from a very small company? Uh, They claim one that was fired and the others just left. And uh, he's, you know, he's not replacing those people. He's just making everyone work, work much harder and nobody likes him. And But Abigail, she works in a very niche area. We don't know what she does. But it means that getting a new job won't be that easy. But she has had a, a job interview which she thinks went well and she's had some other leads and she's got some savings so she could survive for a few months if she just left. What should she do? Abigail, you can't put a price on your mental health. Put yourself first and walk away. This is from Harry in Exeter. 
Having promising leads in a niche area is nothing but a good sign. And once you're out of this job, you can throw yourself fully into a job search. And as Maria said, you know, it, it motivates you if you've, you know, if you don't have a job, you, you got to get one. If you're naturally a saver, you'll soon build back anything you have to spend on yourself in the meantime. Times like this are surely what savings are for in the first place. I agree. Hello, Graham. Abigail should contact ACAS, a free independent service for mediation between employers and employees. Ask for an extension to your sick note until the interview process is completed. Submit a grievance with your current employer for bullying and harassment. You'll need this potentially for future legal claims. Plus, it shows you're not a pushover. Don't resign. Okay. Um, with any luck, they'll decide to settle to avoid legal fines and you'll get a soft landing as you look for your next role. Stand up to your boss. You'll be glad you did and can leave with your, he with your head held up high. Plus, you might encourage others to do the same. And that's from uh, Carl, who is a HR consultant. Thank you very much. Really practical, helpful advice. Carl, thank you so much. Uh, Molly's in London. Dear Graham and Maria, Abigail needs to stay in a job. I've worked in HR for 30 plus years. When interviewing, it's always better to have a job to get a job. When a potential employer asks why you're not employed, what do you say? I didn't get on with my boss. I didn't like it. No, stick with it, but look for a new job furiously, but not desperately. Not having an income can create even more stress than a bad boss. I mean, what you say is true, but equally... It does sound pretty toxic. Uh, to paraphrase Whoopi Goldberg in Ghost, Abigail, you in danger, girl. Get out now. I found myself in a very similar situation a few years ago, and leaving it was the best thing I ever did. It's been a slow process building up my confidence again after constantly being berated and undermined, but I finally found my professional and personal worth again. No job is worth the impact on your mental health and it creeps into more areas of your life than you realise. Look after yourself. Thank you so much, Jenna, for that. Uh, I have to give the Waitrose Truffles and Bubbles, the Prosecco and Truffles, to uh, Carl, the HR consultant, because, uh, you know, that's the sort of advice you pay for. So uh, thank you very much for that. Second lot of responses after Blur. Graham's Dell Responses Part 2. And uh, I'm going to say, for about the first response, I mean, so many people getting in touch today with both of these problems. So thank you so much. And again, my favourite responder will be getting the Waitrose Truffles and Bubbles. That's Prosecco with a choice of truffle stock, chocolate, champagne or salted caramel. Our second letter, oh, such uh, a thorny, difficult one. Uh, Rosie is in Glasgow. She just turned 40 and she's been with her husband for 12 years, OK? They have a two-year-old and they started parenthood because Rosie was ill in her 30s. Um, now, they, Rosie basically would like uh, a sibling for her daughter. She feels like if she doesn't, she will have failed her daughter uh, they were doing fertility treatment, but now uh, their the marriage is kind of in a rough rough place after a terrible year with a toddler who doesn't sleep and aging parents and all sorts of stresses, and so the husband's going, no, I'm not interested in pursuing this fertility. Uh, Rosie still is. They're in counselling, but it's not going to be a quick fix, um, and you know she doesn't have many eggs left. What? Should she do? Does she accept the fact that uh, she now has an only child because she, you know, feels there'll be a great grief in her life that uh, she didn't have another child? Uh, what do people think she should do? Andrea in Portishead, tell Rosie I was in exactly the same boat. My daughter is now an adult and she has been a delight from day one. We've been able to take her everywhere and we are all very close and happy with each other. Treasure the daughter you have. She will be fine as long as she has loving parents behind her. This way, you can enjoy your later years without exhaustion. Uh, feel for Rosie, really tricky one. Um, I think the reason for wanting a second child is the core point here. The feeling of the child needing a sibling. Or is that you that want a second child? I think it was also what family did Rosie grow up in? I think people try to replicate the family they were in because they think, oh, that's the right one. Um and if you weren't an only child, then you kind of think, oh, terrible. This is, by the way, this is Andrew in Glasgow. Um, there are millions of very happy only children out there. So the question is, what is the real reason for wanting a second child? And is it worth putting what you have on the line? 
Uh, Sharon Whitehouse says, you can't help what your body clock is telling you. And unfortunately, men sometimes don't have the same feelings at the same time. Rosie should listen to her body, but go into this in an open way through the counselling. Otherwise, it could damage your marriage and upset the family unit. I had six rounds of IVF. Oh, Sharon. And all failed. Then conceived naturally. Miracles do happen and single children also thrive in a loving family. Hey Graham, Maria, I struggled to conceive a second child, had numerous miscarriages. As much as I wanted a sibling for my son, the trials and tribulations of trying to conceive were steering me away from enjoying my time with him. Every time it didn't happen felt like a hammer blow, not to mention the physical recovery. My son is 13, and I'm often told by parents who have lots of children how much they envy my amazing bond with my son, how they wish they had more time to give to each of their children. Of course, I feel sad I couldn't have another child, but I made the right decision to stop trying and focus on the amazing child I do have and remind myself how lucky I am every day. I'm so glad to hear that, Emma in Bristol. And Keith from Long Eaton says, Dear Rosie, have you considered a puppy? Your child would love the playmate and the little ball, the little fur ball uh, will bring happiness and calm to the whole family. And, you know, that sounds kind of facile. <laughs> Uh, a bit of advice but you know you're probably not wrong Keith uh, it could tick a lot of the boxes um, uh, Prosecco the bubbles and uh, truffles going to give to uh, Sharon I'm going to give them to Sharon and thank you for sharing your stories I know uh, people have been through a lot so uh, it, it means a lot that you were, were generous with your advice there for Rosie Virgin Radio. 